Welcome to the Tuesday, June 13th, 2017 Cape Elizabeth School Board meeting. If we could all rise and say the Pledge of Allegiance, please. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. First item on the agenda tonight um, are adjustments to the agenda. Are there any proposed adjustments to the agenda? Seeing none. Moving on to item two, approval of school board minutes. May I have a motion, please? I move we approve the school board minutes um, as they appear in our packet this evening. A second. Discussion? All those in favor? Thank you. <coughs> Moving on to item three. I imagine that our student representatives have graduated and they have moved on to <laughs> the beach, hopefully. <laughs> And we will look forward to next year's student representatives. Item four is comments from public on agenda items. Are there any members of the public that would like to comment on agenda items tonight? Seeing none, we're moving on to communications and it is our great pleasure to welcome the Pond Co. Principal of the Day, Max Tallman. Please join us, Max. Good morning. Pond Cove principal for the day today. I did a lot of work today. I said the morning announcements to the whole school. I checked in classrooms to see if kids were off to a good start. They were doing a good job. <coughs> I had I had some special rules today. Kids could chew gum, wear silly or favorite hats, and earn extra recess or choice time for from their teachers. I brought extra gum with me in case anyone forgot. I collected notes and delivered boxes to classrooms and I had lunch with a friend of mine and Mrs. Hassan. We had pizza. I checked in with the nurse to make sure Kids were not getting too hot. I helped Mrs. Mr. Shields controlling the kids in gym class. It was a very fun and busy day. Thank you, Matt. Thank you very much. Thank you. A fun tradition continues. So impressive. At this time, we are going to recognize our retirees. And I understand that Tony Giadoni is not able to attend tonight. Is that correct? And um, I was it's, I was notified also um, Eric Nielsen is not attending. Okay, thank you. I just wanted to make sure. So um, 
Jean Grant. Is Jeff, is, or is Jeff going to speak? Thank you. We would love to hear from Jeff. <laughs> so I, I will mention in reference to Tony Giudoni, he's known by the kids as Mr. G. Um, they just gave, uh, said farewell to him today and they named an award that hopefully will become an, well, will become an annual award, the Tony Giudoni Award, uh, to a teacher who sort of goes above and beyond and makes the school a welcoming place and that sort of thing. He is best known for, well, excellent teaching, number one, if kids are fortunate enough to have him in class, but he's also equally as well known, if not better, by most of the kids for standing in a particular junction in the school and greeting every kid every morning um, and kidding them and making fun of them and asking them questions and acknowledging who they are and saying hello generally. So he is also known as Mr. G to all of the kids um, and every morning one of the first people he greets is, is Jeannie Grant um, who, is, who is sitting here with her husband David um, and, and so he, he welcomes Jeannie as Mrs. G every day. So they are Mr. G and Mrs. G, um, <laughs> although they are not spouses. Um, <laughs> but, but that's the way they refer to one another. And I will say that uh, about Jeannie, um, I, I, since I've been here uh, at the high school, she's, she's been here. Um, and I suspect that every institution that I've ever worked at that works really well has an unsung hero somewhere in the building. And without any question, the unsung hero of Cape Elizabeth High School for all the years that I've been here and many more besides is Jeannie. Um, she does so many things and I just want to highlight a few. I will say that um, for, for 13 of the 16 years that I've been here, she was my prefrontal cortex, um, remembering the details. Um, uh, she was my memory, keeping me organized. Um, three years ago, I made the biggest sacrifice I've ever made as principal at Cape Elizabeth High School and, and gave her as a gift to the guidance department um, in her new role as registrar and bookkeeper. Um, and she's done a wonderful job there as well. And in that capacity, she, she really, I mean, I call her my prefrontal cortex. She sort of serves in that capacity for me still now, because I still go to her periodically, very frequently, and say, Jeannie, because I don't, because I need her memory, I need her organization or whatever. She really does serve as the prefrontal cortex of many, many, many other people in the school besides myself. So just an example of the kind of things that she gets involved in that sort of are behind the scenes. Um, graduation, um, uh, sort of, uh, this is probably only a partial list of the things that Jeannie did in connection with graduation. Um, she organized the diplomas, she physically organizes them, um, she makes sure that the names of the diplomas are spelled correctly, um, meticulously. She arranges all the honors cords for kids who do on get honors cords. She reserves Fort Williams every year. Um, she orders the chairs every year, um, making sure that we know when they're going to be there and that they'll be there at the right time. Um, she distributes gowns, organizes the distribution of gowns to faculty. Um, she orders the flowers um, and she generally does, and she works for years with the assistant principal and with me just to make sure that the, the, the marching order is right, the seating order is right, that all the kids are getting the diplomas that they ought to be getting. So that's just one example. Um, her major job, so she, she shifted over to the guidance department and when she shifted over, she had a full-time job. And the full-time job consisted of bookkeeping, um, which is a huge role because she is responsible for maintaining the books, cutting all the checks, and doing all the paperwork, collecting all the documentation for literally tens of thousands of dollars that flow through the high school student activities account um, every year. Um, and every year, the auditor tries to catch her um, and everybody because that's their job. Um, and, and I don't think they've ever caught any error that Jeannie has ever made in all the years that I've been there. She balances every month the checkbook to the penny, um, taking whatever time is necessary to make sure that that happens. Um, so when she was in the main office, she was a bookkeeper. A small part of her job was as the principal secretary, which really was about organizing special events, undergrad awards, graduate, senior awards night, graduation, all those sorts of things. Um, she is a marvelous editor um, 
and I would frequently, whenever I had an email, long email that had was complicated and had, she was always the person I went to. She worked for many years at the Portland Press Herald and and developed an eagle eye and has an amazing sense of grammar. Um, so the other part that she done, she did, is is as sort of helping Joanne Moriarty as receptionist for the school. Then she shifted over to guidance. And in guidance, there was a position which was a full-time position, which was called the registrar, which is basically keeping track of kids' schedules, transcripts, and all that sort of thing. Well, she shifted over when there was a budget cut and a secretarial force reduction, and so she took all the things that she really had done in the main office and then added them to the registrar's function, so she was essentially doing two, two full-time jobs as one person. Um, and and she does it with just such grace and such skill and such confidence and such experience. Um, it's really quite amazing. Um, she is also very handy. She, she is the school handy person. So for whatever reason, and there would be any number of reasons why I needed an Allen wrench to open the front doors, <laughs> I'd say to Jeannie, do you have an Allen wrench by any chance? And she'd go rustling to her. Supplies and, God, and somewhere an Alan wrench appears, or a screwdriver, a Phillips head screwdriver, or something, because something has to be tightened. And Jeannie would have a Phillips head screwdriver right in her her bag of magic tricks. So it's really quite amazing. Um, and I am um, really sorry for the school that she is leaving, because our unsung hero leaves, uh, our prefrontal cortex leaves. Um, and it is almost hard to imagine the school sort of functioning. Jeannie's biggest worry right now is making sure that the person who is hired is, is, is up to speed. And we've hired somebody that we're very lucky to have hired, and Jeannie's already started to work with that person to pass along her knowledge. But her biggest source of stress is to make sure that things go smoothly for Kate Elizabeth High School after it turns, and to make sure that Marie Cross is absolutely up to speed with all the things that she did. Um, I will also say on a personal note that Jeannie is, you know, ever since I've been there, I very quickly learned that she is somebody you can trust with really confidential information and she has wise judgment. Um, she, there's little I know that she doesn't know that I've asked her about it one time as a sounding board. Um, and it's always been treated with the utmost confidentiality. She shows, she shows completely respect, complete respect for kids. Um, she does a lot of behind, a lot of things behind the scenes to support kids that I'm not, not going to talk about because she literally does them behind the scenes. Uh, but we will miss Jeannie Grant and um, thank you so much for all your years of service, Jeannie. I've been really lucky to be able to work with you the past bunch of years. Please join us up here, Ms. Grant. <coughs> Kathy Walsh and speaking on behalf of her, I believe, is Mike Tracy. Good evening. Thank you for this opportunity. Uh, it's my pleasure to be able to honor Kathy Walsh, um, who is finishing her 36th year in education, her 17th with us here in Cape Elizabeth. Um, Kathy's had many, many roles, and I, I, I won't go into what all of them are because uh, for fear of missing some or something, but Kathy is the kind of person who, when you need something done, she will, you will turn around and she'll say, I'll do it, I'll do it, I'll do it. You can just count on her all the time to put her hand up and do something that she feels, if it's good for the school or good for the children, Kathy Walsh would be there. Um, she's been a certification representative in the middle school for about 10 years, I believe. Um, she started a knitting club about five years ago, and she has spawned a whole new generation of knitters uh, across Cape Elizabeth, which is really just wonderful to see. Most recently, um, at, at our Festival of Curiosity, 
um, Kathy had put out as just a fun activity if anyone would like to come and learn how to knit. And at one point, people looked into her uh, area and she had, I don't remember how many eighth grade boys lined up <laughs> knitting away and just so delighted that they had learned how to knit with, wow. with Mrs. Walsh. And I think it's, I wanted to share that with just one example of the many, many gifts she's given our school and the children and our colleagues. Um, she's really the, the life force of, of the middle school. She finds the positive in all things and she is truly uh, not only a team leader but a leader in every sense of the word and she just has led and um, provided leadership to um, our school and her colleagues with utmost class and dignity and so it's my pleasure to congratulate Kathy Walsh on her retirement. Congratulations Kathy. I believe I'll, I'll speak on behalf of, of Catherine. One correction, Kathy has done the knitting club for 15 years, not five, I apologize for that. So 15 years of knitters out there. But, uh, I'm so sorry about that, Kathy. That's, that's no, just exponentially increases how many children That's true, <laughs> yeah, it really does. Um, so Catherine, it's my pleasure to, to honor and speak uh, about Catherine Kelsey. Um, Catherine um, has is finishing a 20-year career in the Cape Elizabeth schools. I feel lucky because I get to speak about her, but she's worked in all three of the schools over those 20 years. I don't know the breakdown, but um, she really has had a remarkable career. She um, really is the um, quintessential example of patience and calm. She is unflappable, amazingly kind. She has a very sharp wit, one of the funniest senses of humor um, that, that you'll, you'll come across. Um, the students adore her, her colleagues adore her. She will be greatly missed and it's my great privilege and honor to um, recognize and celebrate Catherine Kelsey for her 20 years of service to the Cape Elizabeth Schools. Congratulations. <laughs> all retirees and it is evident that um, there you have made an incredible impact on the students and the entire community and we are very sad to see you go thank you so much for your service to this district at this time we'd like to pause and have a brief reception in in your honor so Please join us and mingle and have some refreshments. Thank you. We're going to continue on at this time. We're moving on to item 5C, superintendent's report. Okay. Um, thank you very much. Well, the first thing uh, I see here on the agenda I want to mention is that um, I've had the opportunity to have a few meetings with our um, school principals looking at the current evaluation plan that's been approved by the school boards maybe a couple of years ago. Feeling, our feeling has been that it's um, unnecessarily complicated and cumbersome. And, um, and that's not useful. So after a bit of um, review, we got our hands on the plan that's been approved by the Falmouth School Board for their principals, and our feeling was it's a better starting point. And so 
we sent that plan into the Department of Education and, and asked for their review. We have to believe they're going to say it's fine, it was fine for Falmouth. And at that point, once they give their nod of approval, we'll bring it back to you next August or September and ask you to adopt it. At that point in time, explain the, the change between what you had and what we're suggesting. There's no need to get into it all tonight, but it's a streamlined, um, it feels more manageable, and um, that's all good. So yeah. we'll, we'll get back to you on that. Um, I, I would just mention that the teacher's evaluation plan is kind of headed in the same direction in, in, in terms of review, and I believe that the teacher's evaluation committee, which is made up of teachers and administrators, um, are, I've been working this year on a few adjustments to that plan. I, I believe that that's going to be going to this Department of Education also for consideration, and you'll be hearing about that as well next fall. That plan is not being traded for another complete plan, it just revisions that plan. I think people mm -hmm. feel that plan overall has a lot of promise. Yeah. Um, the next thing I'd like to mention is that I have received since our last meeting two notices of resignation. One comes from Assistant Principal Doug Purley. Um, Mr. Purley informed me that his plans are to step down effective the 30th of June, 2018. So I um, want you to be aware of that. And he'll be here next year, but next year will be his last year. And then I've also received uh, a letter recently from a special education teacher, uh, Nancy Carroll, and she also uh, is resigning, but she's resigning effective at the end of this school year. <coughs> um, so, let's see, what else do I have here? Facilities and transportation. Well, boy, what do I want to say? First of all, you all know that Greg Morrill stepped down in, at the end of May, um, and Several people have really stepped up to help keep things moving ahead quite nicely. I'd like to mention Janet um, Hoskin, who's done a, a lot to help just keep the general department going forward. She's also taken on the responsibility of doing extra work to uh, support and manage and, 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 and just be, generally assist our, our custodial staff in, in all the buildings. So uh, I want to thank Janet, uh, Pat Fowler, in transportation. She's also taken on some extra work um, in, in Greg's absence and um, we appreciate Pat doing that and Rob McVean. Um, he is head of the maintenance department and he um, is, is taking on additional projects that are being contracted out and trying to be sure that that work um, is done well and he'll monitor, uh, monitor some of it and just keeping those the projects that are lined up for the summer moving ahead. Some projects that were scheduled for the summer, the notice didn't get out in time or uh, there have been some problems in the bidding process. Just this stuff happens, but the point is, some of the projects that were scheduled for the summer may not be completed until the fall or maybe during a winter or, or, or um, a mid-year break, but we're hoping to get everything done, but um, that just happens. Um, I also want to mention that, that Catherine Mesmer and, and, and Matt Sturgis have also been very helpful. Um, they, and I met recently with people from, uh, who provide contract for um, looking at the controls in our schools and town offices and, and buildings. And, but they also are very involved in um, helping us go through the process of, of of interviewing and replacing uh, Mr. Marles. I believe they're going to be holding interviews in the next week or two, and and we hope to see that the possibility of somebody being here uh, sometime in July, the very latest early August, um, but we think perhaps sooner than that. But there are we're a good number of people that applied for this job, and I believe they're going to be inter interviewing around a half dozen or so. So they're, they're, they're very encouraged by that, and again, I want to thank all five of those people for, for their help. Um, let's see. Maybe all I need to say right now. We're, we're moving ahead. Yeah. 
Um, <coughs> so moving along to school year 17. Okay, so I um, put out, well, actually, Andrew did um, for me um, an invitation to all the people that are leaving this year um, for either they're retiring, they're, re uh, they're moving on to other jobs, they're I don't know what, but they are going to not be here next year. Their families are, are, are moving, relocating to other states. A lot of reasons, but I, I sat down and asked all of them if they want to come in and meet, and the majority of them um, were um, kind enough to take me up on it. So I've had an opportunity to meet with a number of people that are, are leaving. I haven't met with all of them, and I still have even more meetings scheduled for later this week and even into next week. So, But I wanted to give you... Um, a flavor for some of the things that I um, have, have, have heard from um, our employees and um, first of all, one thing is if you, if you look at the total number of years of experience, there's, there's a lot of experience walking out these doors. I mean, you, you really appreciate the, the years of, of, of dedication of, of teachers and staff who have given, in, in many cases, their, this has been their job, this has been well, what they've done. And, it's greatly appreciated. It's also sad to see it walking out. Um, it's part of what we're trying to get out of the exit interviews, just capturing some of their ideas. Um, I, I would say that the things, some of the things I, I've heard, I'm going to speak generally you now, okay? I'm not speaking about any school, just generally speaking, and I'm not saying that, that this is going to be the ultimate um, findings, but to date, what I've heard are that they're um, we're making gains on improving morale in our school district, but there's still plenty of work to do there on, on, on working on morale. Um, I've heard people emphasize the importance of, of strong leadership. That's been mentioned often. Um, I've heard um, people really stressing the importance of our district and schools having a clear direction um, where they're headed, and um, I've also heard that follow through is something that we need to keep working at. Um, I've heard that people feel that the faculty in our schools are a great asset and they're, they're our strength. Um, I've heard a lot of compliments about our students. I've heard a lot of praise for um, the parent and community support, and I've heard that our appreciation for it, you know, the, the, a sense of, the, of a cohesion among teachers and staff and uh, a sense of the family. So that's a flavor of some of the things I, I'm hearing in these, in these meetings. Um, let's see. I also would like to point out that I guess every year you get a report, a volunteer report, and it's in your mail packet. It's going to be online for the public, and it'll be online shortly. But it's a very nice summary of, of the year, and uh, and John um, has done a great job of um, of stressing how important it volunteers and is to the life of the school, but also the life of the community. It's just it's really it's wonderful. Um, and the last thing I'd like to mention is that I heard earlier today in a meeting with um, Mr. Shedd about a student-led assembly at the end of the year that I, I thought, gosh, I think you would really be as interested in hearing about this as I was. So I asked him if he'd be willing to take a second and just outline for you what occurred and what it might mean to some possibilities for next school year at the high school. So the, the board has heard on a couple of occasions, I think, about the respect team that we organized in the aftermath of the election. So that was the group who's, who organized the Bridges Dinner that we had back in March, I think it was. Um, so the other enterprise that we've been looking at on that team is having more frequent assemblies to create the possibility of building a stronger sort of community feel. Although I think in many respects there is a really strong community feel, but we, we don't get together as a whole school community often. 
So a, group, a small group of folks went to Wayne Fleet, who has a practice of regular weekly assemblies, and we decided that we would pilot one, and they are student-led. So the first one happened on Friday, um, and it was completely student-run. And it really, its theme was sort of diversity, cultural awareness of foreign connections. Um, so it had three parts. One, um, and, I, and I will say her name because the board has seen Halima Sher, who's a 10th grader at the high school, because she was one of the um, one of the students who spoke at the school board the other couple weeks ago. So, so last month, I think it was. Um, so <clears throat> Halima talked about her culture. Um, and Halima shared some of the explanation of what the tradition of the hijab is all about and what that means. And she was very well, well received um, by, by students at the high school. Um, and I think it was a great experience for her and it was a great experience for the kids to hear about her family background and her cultural background. Um, <clears throat> so the second part was essentially hearing from our foreign exchange students. Uh, we've had five of them this year. Um, sort of as they approach the end of their, their sort of experience in America to have, hear them reflect on um, what they appreciate about the Cape Elizabeth schools and what's different and what's the same and, and that sort of thing. So they shared some of their background and some of their perspectives. And the last thing was um, a small group of, people, of students who went to Cuba with Mrs. Page that spring break trip that the board approved some, quite a long time ago. Um, so they, they talked about their experiences in Cuba. So the thing that I guess caused me to talk to the superintendent about it today is just a number, it's, it's a continuation of sort of that effort that we've been making and the other thing I was really proud about for the students is that it really was a student-led thing. It was, there was not a, there was not a adult who got up and spoke during the entire assembly. Hmm. So. Thank you. Thank that you. That sounds excellent. <clears throat> Thank you, Howard. Mm -hmm. Moving on to item six, new business. Item A, may I have a motion, please? I move we approve the collective bargaining agreement for the Cape Elizabeth Education Association, MEA, NEA, dated July 1st, 2017 to June 30th, 2020. I second. Any discussion? Um, Mr. Ash gave us his regrets. He had to leave in time to vote in his hometown, but um, he expressed his um, thanks to the board and I, re I um, sent them right back to him. We had a very um, positive and productive negotiation um, string of sessions and I believe that the board and the teachers feel we've come to a very positive mutual agreement. So feeling good about this. And I would like to thank Howard and Bruce Smith and Joe Morrissey for hours and Catherine Messmer for hours and hours of long work on this process. And you as well. Yeah. Further discussion? All those in favor? Thank you. They agree too. <laughs> Moving on to item 6A, may, uh, 6B, may I have a motion, please? I move that we approve the collective bargaining agreement for the Cape Elizabeth Educational Administrators Association dated July 1st, 2017 to June 30th, 2020. I'll second that. Discussion? I would like to again thank um, Noel and Jessica for um, their work on behalf of the administrators and also to thank Susanna and Barbara for working with myself and Catherine and Howard on this agreement and I, I believe that we all agree this is a, a, a positive and very workable contract for the future. So thank you. Further discussion? All those in favor? Thank you. Item 6C, may I have a motion please? I move we vote to authorize the superintendent to execute a municipal lease purchase agreement with Biddeford Savings Bank in the amount of $139,809.20 for school department printers and copiers. A second. Discussion? All those in favor? 
Thank you. Item 6D. May I have a motion, please? I move for consideration and action <clears throat> pursuant to, why do I always get these, 1485-4 of Title 20A, that the superintendent of schools be authorized after the close of the fiscal year in order to address audit-related adjustments that may be needed to transfer not more than 5% of the total appropriation for any cost center in the current fiscal year operating budget to another cost center among other cost centers, provided that the current fiscal year operating budget shall not be increased by such transfers. A second. Discussion? Just by way of confirmation of my understanding and for the public, this is required language when you're moving things out of the specified budget categories at the end of the year to balance up your budget as you ordinarily do. Is that right. correct? Yep. And, and, and not to exceed 5% yep. at any one cost center. Yep. Thank you. All those in favor? Okay. Item 6E. May I have a motion, please? I move that we approve the Cape Elizabeth Schools 2017 to 2020 technology plan. Second. And um, Noel, did you want to say a few words about this? My understanding is that this is more of a, a curricular plan than a than a like a hardware and technology plan. Yes. And so now it's poor Kathy's job. <laughs> and the only thing is. I'm wondering if we could make a, um, a change to the plan at this last minute um, and change the title to say learning technology plan you and can that's it motion. Um, because that reflects a little bit more of what it is. Um, technology is basically in the back of it. It's more about uh, the curriculum and, and that's really what we worked on. So that's the only change I want to say. We've been working on it since 2015-2016. Uh, school year where we started out with surveys that came up with plans. We then had, uh, with Ruth Ellen, we went through the curriculum, which we're still working on, and, and that's one of those things that we'll continue to work on. After that, we held biz, um, uh, building level, the assistant principals all held building level um, committees. So we had a lot of um, shareholders that uh, came up with all this plan. So finally, we're up to 20. So that's the only change I'd, I'd like to make. I'm going to invite the vice chair to make an amendment. Oh, I'd like to uh, make an amendment that we change the title of the uh, technology plan to read as the learning technology plan for Noel's request. Thank you. Second that. Okay. It's a friendly amendment because you made your own amendment on your own motion, so I don't think that we have to vote on that. So we're still in discussion. We are in discussion. I would just um, had a chance to read through the plan. I like the plan. The one thing I would uh, consider for future technology plans to consider including it, how often it's going to be refreshed, and how we're going to track what's in here. So sort of thinking through, there's a lot of things that lay out a lot of different goals of who's going to do what by what. Um, but as these sort of plans come, we were always trying to not reinvent the wheel. We should look at what is the regular periodic point at which we're going to review this plan for revisions and how we're going to track what's in the plan. So a suggestion for future uh, revisions, but not for now. Excellent. Thank you. I just want to say thank you, Noel, for all your hard work. Um, Kimberly and I were with you for just a very brief period of time. I didn't realize it went back that far. So thank you so much. Further discussion? All those in favor? Thank you. Moving on to item 6F. May I have a motion, please? I move we approve the 2016-2017 co-curricular administrative and athletic personnel nominations. David Croft, PC student support team member, and Sarah Beckel, basketball unified team. Second. <clears throat> Discussion? All those in favor? <coughs> Thank you. <coughs> Item 6G, may I have a motion please? I move that we approve a proposed high school mock trial team trip to the 2017 Empire World Competition in New York City on November 16th through the 20th 
in 2017. Second. Discussion? How many years has this been that they get to go to this competition? This well, I feel like this is new, right? This would be the second year right. last year. Right. That's pretty great. And my understanding is that it is really um, important and exceptional preparation. Yeah. Pretty so, cool. Yep. We wish them luck. Mm -hmm. If we vote for them to go. <laughs> <laughs> All those in favor? Thank you. <laughs> Item 6H. I move we approve the following policy for adoption, IJOC, school volunteers. A second. Discussion? I would just bring your attention to, in your packet, the yellow highlight from, we've had, this is a third reading, right. an unusual third reading. It's taken that while to refine this to the point where we're very satisfied that it gives us the quality volunteer support we're looking for, as well as being cognizant of the fact that we're bringing lots and lots of adults into work with kids. Mm -hmm. So the yellow highlight that I mentioned, I believe last month, that we would add is the part about background checks for volunteers who will be coming in, and that we're asking that those volunteers whose work assignments regularly includes one-to-one -one support of students will have fingerprint results on, fi on file, and any adults accompanying an overnight field trip will also have fingerprint results on file. We plan to figure out a way to logistically support that. Financially, as a department, it's a, it's a under 10, probably, number of people. Um, but taking this last step for student safety purposes seems to be appropriate for the board to uh, approve. Excellent. I'd like to thank you and the um, policy committee for working so diligently on this. and. Um, with a lot of thought and care for that balance of wanting to invite and involve as many <clears throat> adults for, for what they bring to our students and, and finding that balance of um, safety and appropriate regulation. I was happy too that our principals feel very comfortable being asked to be aware of any regular volunteer assignments so that throughout the whole district someone who's in all the time and the amazing capacities they offer us. It's just really acknowledged and appreciated yes. at the building principles level. Yes. And thank you everybody for your sensitivity around this issue. Um, Barbara, I would just like to say I really appreciate the work that the policy committee has done, the very thoughtful. When I look at the volunteer report that we looked at earlier this evening, you know, the number of hours that our community members, this is such an important document that guides, I mean, for instance, there's 1,500 plus individual volunteers in our district between the Pond Cove Middle School and High School. That's a lot to keep track of, and it's important to everyone that that be, have a clear guideline on how that works. Well, I'd like to acknowledge, too, that this came to us out of the recommendation of John Holdridge, our coordinator, just saying he would really like clear parameters from the board and his work going forward. So he really initiated this. He really brought us a lot of proposals. We talked about it a lot, and I feel really comfortable with where we've landed. Fantastic. Great. Thank you. And thank you to John Holden. Yes, thank you to John. <clears throat> Conscientious. All those in favor? Thank you. Item 6I, no vote required, but Barbara, would you just speak a little bit? Sure, this is first reading now on um, IGA, Curriculum Development and Adoption. I'll do the first steps together. IKE, Student Progress Through the Grades, Promotion, Retention, Acceleration of Students, and IKF, Graduation Requirements. Um, I give full credit on these recommendations to Kathy Stankard, who came and met with Policy Committee a couple of months ago, and simply worked with us to try to bring our policies up to match actual current practice, to look carefully at our promotion, retention, acceleration of student policies, and our graduation requirements to reflect the new requirements of a proficiency-based diploma. So if you look through this, the um, redlining, the, the cross-out areas are, are just the language revisions that she felt would best serve us. And correct me if anything I say is wrong, Kathy. So on the IGA one, you'll just, um, curriculum development, you'll see that um, Director of Teaching Learning has talked about a lot. We're talking about matching main learning results and guiding principles away from common cores. Just really updating this language in a, sh in a you know, page and a half policy. 
The promotion retention acceleration of students one, again, has updated language, and the only real change that we talked about quite a bit is in the area about retention, where um, before it had been left to the uh, building administrator to be responsible for making final decision. And we really talked about the fact that in those rare cases of retention, you really need a full team consensus, and you need to have parents comfortable with the recommendation the team has made. So we've softened that language to be that it will be a team decision so that parents have full voice mm -hmm. in, in that kind of a recommendation. Uh, in acceleration, it was decided that the, print, that the team will also work on final decision there, but um, that the principal will have a little more say in that one because that, that is really a precedent-setting issue around acceleration through the grades and needs to be made hugely sensitively for the whole student population. So that's what I think you'd see primarily is the change in IKE. Mm -hmm. And then in the graduation requirements, um, again, you'll just note the sort of transition out of the credit-based diploma into the proficiency-based diploma and all the language that supports that. She really carefully laid out, starting in 2021 on page four, the areas where our students have to demonstrate proficiency to graduate and the areas that keep being added year after year. Again, this may be revisited given how our um, state governance boards tend to change their minds about being able to fund some of the areas of the requirements, but for now, this is exactly meets the law, and I give Kathy a ton of thanks for bringing that language to us. Would you add anything that I've said? No, that's a perfect okay. <laughs> Thank you very much. You're welcome. So first reading on those three. Great. Questions for policy committee to bring back to conversation in the fall. <laughs> We're taking the summer off. Right. <laughs> okay, thanks. Thank you for all your hard work uh, on leading policy committee this school year. Thank you. One more though, student wellness, JL. And um, because Heather participated in that committee, I'm going to ask if she'd speak to. Oh, Heather left. Yes. Okay, Heather. <laughs> Thanks a lot. <laughs> um, well, you'll see that this is a result of a proposal from a, from a, a large committee, Heather, yes, that you participated in as well. And, and forgive me, I'm, for, I'm not remembering the name of the staff member that came. That uh, Aaron Taylor. Aaron Taylor. Uh, yes. Uh, um, she is Ponco's school nurse. Yes, and she, she represented well, along with Heather, the changes that were recommended in this wellness policy. Um, you'll see uh, areas about nutrition, about mental health, about physical activity, and, um, um, and they're feeling very strong about um, asking slowly teachers to think about pulling back on the use of food for rewards in classrooms, for example, for really promoting um, good understanding of social emotional well-being, and to really have a goal for daily physical activity throughout our whole district. We talked quite a bit around that, and this is the language we landed on to make it uh, uh, an important goal that principals will then have oversight and, and pushing forward for us. So that's awesome. Okay. Good. <laughs> Thank you, and, and I wish Heather were here to say thank you to her because I, I believe that Heather and Howard and, uh, yes. met weekly, right, with the group, which like is seven a.m. or something. Yeah. yeah. So a lot of new language in here, and I think it reads really well. So, okay, thank well, you. Um, thank you to that committee too. <clears throat> Moving on to item six J. May I have a motion, please? I move we approve the superintendent's nomination of new personnel for the 2017-2018 school year. Christine Winterbrook, gifted and talented teacher. Jake Hotevik, middle school interventionist. Joseph V. Doan, teacher grade six. Sherry McInnes, teacher grade four. Ison Simpson, high school science teacher at a 0.25 current position increase. Danielle Grimes, social worker high school. Emily Pillar, vocal music teacher, middle school and Jill Young, nurse, middle school. A second. And I apologize to Jake, if I mispronounced your <laughs> name. Discussion? All those in favor? Thank you. Item 6K, may I have a motion please? I move that we grant the superintendent of schools authority to hire school personnel excluding administrative positions which will require board approval during the summer. 
second. Discussion? <coughs> All those in favor? <coughs> Thank you. Item 6L, may I have a motion please? I move we approve an unpaid leave of absence request for high school teacher Elizabeth Yarrington during the 2017-2018 school year. A second? Discussion? I just want to say I thoroughly enjoyed her speech at graduation. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. Was was that was fantastic. You could tell an English teacher with voice. It was really <laughs> that's awesome. All those in favor? Mm -hmm. Item 6M. May I have a motion, please? I move we approve extending the employment contract by two working days for elementary school counselor Brianne Gallagher beginning in the 2017-2018 school year. Second. Discussion? I appreciated the explanation. It makes terrific sense to do that for Bri. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So for the public's sake, Howard, do you want to tell us a bit? The, the, what was well, the quick explanation? First of all, I believe what I heard was um, that in her role, she has the fewest number of days available to do work with families at, at, over the summer. Um, and it's just a matter of, this is not an unusual request, it's an annual request of these days. And so rather than have these be special extra days that you uh, pay per diem, expand the work year to what really the, the, the job demands, which for now, right now, it seems like these two days will, will, will be sufficient. If not, then they'll come back for the following year. But it's just, it's a matter of work to be done, and some of the work can't be done during the school year because of things happening over the summer months. Mm -hmm. Terrific. Thank you. Thank you. All those in favor? Thank you. Item 6N may have a motion, please. I move that we approve the superintendent's recommendation for administrator continuing contract renewal through 2018-2019 school year per CEEA bargaining agreement article V63, sorry, whatever it is, A 2017-18 contract approved on 2-14-17 for Nate Carpenter, the high school assistant principal. Can I speak to this? Yes. This has to do with the fact that Nathan has been with us through the probationary period into years beyond. And earlier this year, when we extended his contract, we extended it for one year. But in fact, the agreement at that time says that it should have been for two. And so we're just making it right. And I know that in speaking about this with, with Mr. Shedd, he supports this extension. And so we're, we're honoring the contract, and, um, and we should have done that earlier. It's come up, come by us. Okay, yeah. that's a good second. catch. Yeah. Okay, Barbara, second. All those in favor? Thank you. <coughs> <coughs> Item 6O, may I have a motion, please? I move we approve the 2017-2018 co-curricular and athletic personnel nominations as included in our packet. There's just too many to read. A second. Discussion? Just a lot of outstanding coaches and people willing to give time for our kids from athletics to co-curriculars to certification. And it's just, it's what makes things happen around here. So Absolutely. We appreciate, appreciate that a lot. We thank them for their willingness to step up and um, fill these roles that are so, they're so important to students. Um, a lot of times it just takes one adult to have that connection and sometimes it's not through an academic pursuit. Sometimes it's a coach who really has that connection with the student and then that, that brings that student kind of back into the fold or has that, you know, builds that relationship. So. Um, each one of these people are incredibly important, and we thank them. I would just like to, to give a shout out to Andy Strout. I understand he's been ill, and we wish him well in his recovery, and hope to see him back out on the field soon. All those in favor?
Thank you. Oh, Item work seven, committee reports. <laughs> Um, I'm just going to say for the town comp plan um, committee, we will be meeting tomorrow night. Um, and one of the items we'll be talking about is uh, preparing for sort of a kickoff um, promotional event during Strawberry Fest on September, I mean, <laughs> June 24th, Saturday. Um, we're working on it still, but this is hoping to make, um, bring awareness to the whole town about the importance of this committee, this plan. It's great. Great. May the strawberry gods be with us. Yes. <laughs> I'm here. They're supposed to be late. <laughs> yeah. Slightly late harvest. Yes. <laughs> um, policy committee will reconvene in September. Any other committee reports? Moving on to school board agenda requests. Um, we receive school board agenda re requests through this form, also through email, phone calls. We're not so great with smoke signals. Um, direct them to the superintendent or myself, and um, the next regular school board meeting will be at the end of August. <clears throat> Announcements of upcoming meetings. We just heard the town comprehensive planning committee is the meeting is tomorrow night, tomorrow at night. seven o'clock in Jordan conference room, and then this they will we will have a a table at the strawberry fest on the twenty fourth. And I believe everything else will probably ramp up again at the end of the summer. Right. And I'm going to check one more time before we adjourn. Should we have a group prayer? <laughs> <laughs> Nothing yet. Um, so, item 10. I move that we adjourn. Second. <laughs> I'm, I'm giving it to John this time. Totally I'm should. giving it to John. Give it to John. All those in favor. Thank you. Good night.